your initial question regarding the so-called Abrahamic tradition. A tradition must be a masora, something that was given over from generation to generation. And if you don't have a tradition that's given over from generation to the generation, then it is a borrowed tradition. It's not a real tradition. For example, we have a tradition from the Hasidic masters. And our tradition goes from master to student to student and so on and so forth until we get to our generation. We have a Hasidic tradition that goes back nine or ten generations to the Baal Shem Tov. And so if someone comes along and says he's a Hasidic rabbi so we ask who were his teachers? If he has no teachers or if his teachers had no tradition, we cannot call them a Hasidic master. He has a borrowed tradition, but he has really no tradition. And therefore, Christianity, which claims tradition from the Abraham, since they have no documents from Abraham, the documents start at the beginning of the Common Era, uh, and questionable when it actually started, and not an Abrahamic tradition, neither is Islam. There is no tradition in Islam for Arabs to Abraham except for the fact that they have a tradition that even while they were idolaters, they were idolaters for the most part of the centuries prior to the, to the seventh century, uh, boys still would circumcise themselves at age 13. That is a tradition. Everything else is not a tradition. It's borrowed. Okay, now we'll start your question. So I was wondering, um, how do the Hasidic rabbis believe that God came to be? <laughs> God doesn't come to be. God is. Uh, just as the atheist says reality is, we say that God is. Reality is not a, an absolute reality because we know that reality changes. All of existence is in a flux. It comes from a particular point which is called the Big Bang. That's the most uh, accepted um, explanation of the way uh, existence is in, in our universe which means that everything started from a point at some undetermined time in the past. Best estimates is about 13 to 15 billion years ago. At any rate, it always, it didn't always be here. It wasn't always here. It came about from something else. It evolved from something else. God did not evolve. God is the ultimate reality that is the basis of all existences. God is neither physical nor is God spiritual because spirit means a movement. And God is a, an awareness that's all-encompassing. It's like you have an all-encompassing intellect that encompasses every possibility. It doesn't have a beginning, it's aware of everything, okay. aware of the possibilities of everything, and can actualize anything it desires. And that's a, an inkling of the concept of God. God is not something that became. We became. The world became. The universe became. That's clear. There used to be people who believed in a solid state universe. Once they uh, got to seeing the way the universe expands, they came to different conclusions. But they didn't want to, the scientists didn't want to accept the concept of an expanding universe because this would imply an origin, which is exactly what the Torah says, that there was an origin to space and time. Mm -hmm. And so would you say that God 
is all powerful, omnipotent, and all, all powerful, omnipotent. omnipotent. These are very, very powerful, very strong words. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you understand God as the ultimate intellect, let's just use that model. God is far beyond an intellect, but let's use the model of Maimonides as the ultimate intellect. So the ultimate intellect can figure out anything, any system, and can actualize it, give it its uh, basis, give it um, its laws, and can actualize them at any time. So God would be seen as a living intellect that can cause things to happen and understands and anticipates all possibilities. So when you say God is omnipotent and God is all-powerful, it just is a resultant of the fact that God is the starter and the initiator and the one that figures out everything and creates it all. And so because God creates it all, when God has got complete mastery of it. But God is the originator. God is the original um, conceiver and actualizer of everything. Why then does he um, test people? So, like Why Abraham? does God test people? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> let me ask you this. <coughs> Would you rather that somebody gave you everything so you can live your life in luxury, be able to do what you want when you want, and enjoy life for the rest of your life, but never had to accomplish anything? Or would you rather uh, struggle and overcome events around you so that you could be a developed person and that everything that you would receive would be the results and the fruits of your own labors? What would you rather do? Uh, definitely the second one. So that's the answer. Uh, it, it's not much of a test to like an to have life. Or yeah, to, to really see what a person is like, to really look into that person, the person needs to be tested. You know, I have the benefit of age over you. I was once a young person just a few years ago. Uh-huh. And like yourself, wondering why it is that we have to be tested this way. And I discovered that those things that were difficult for me, that were difficult for me to accept, allowed me to be able to overcome certain things and to accomplish certain things personally, which I am glad that I was able to accomplish. Those challenges to me were actually beneficial to me. At the time, I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, so how did mankind come to be if it was only Adam and Eve in the beginning? Like, are we all their children, or do you believe that maybe there are other people around outside of Eden? That's an interesting question. Uh, there, there are people who want to theorize that maybe they were, that Adam is just a story and just a paradigm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't accept that. I accept the literal translation of the Torah. Um, human beings were created from an original couple. Mm-hmm. That's clear. According to the... Stop this for a minute. Make sure the battery is okay. What's the blinking thing? 